Jesus came. There you go. He came that he might save that which was lost. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 3. But if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And so we are a very important part of what God is wanting to do because he is wanting us to help them that the gospel is hid from to see the light and to find the gospel. And then Genesis chapter 30 and verse number 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me child or else I die. And so tonight I want to preach from this subject, and that is that soul, our business is souls, or there is no substitute for souls. Please, God, there is no substitute for souls. Let's just pray. God, I am praying for every soul that's in this building tonight. God, and I am praying especially for you to challenge us as the church of the living God to understand that uh, nothing takes the place of winning souls. Nothing takes the place of reaching for the lost. And we ask you to let a freedom come, let an anointing come. We ask it in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Let's give the Lord another hand of praise as we're being seated. Praise God. Have your lovely way. You Thank you, Lord. I praise you tonight. I worship you tonight. God bless you. you. May be seated. Thank God. I've come tonight to join in Rachel's cry, and that is, give me children or else I die. As a church, we cannot be satisfied with empty altars. We cannot be satisfied with no one being baptized in Jesus' name. Matter of fact, um, I've heated up the baptistry water. I want to start seeing some people getting baptized. Thank God. No one receiving the Holy Ghost. Thank God. We need uh, new conversions. We need new people praying through. We need to be crying out for God to give us souls or else we're going to die. We must get this right or if we don't, thank God, nothing else really matters. Thank God. There is no substitute for souls. Souls are our business. Souls is what the church is all about. It's not just about adult souls. It's not just about children's souls. It's not just about rich people's souls. It's not just about poor people's souls. Thank God. A soul is a soul. Thank God. It doesn't matter. Matter of fact, um, Sister Beth gave me the testimony of um, this, the brother that just passed away in Brother Orange's church didn't have the Holy Ghost, and just a day or two before he passed away, he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank God. It's never too late. Thank God. Whatever it takes for souls to be saved. And so Rachel's cry to Jacob was because she was barren. Thank God. And she was not able to have a child. And because it was a curse uh, for a woman to be barren in the Old Testament. And so she gave that cry, give me child or else I die. Just being married was not enough. She wanted to be a mother. Thank God. She wanted to be just to so uh, bad that she said, if I don't have a child, I'm just going to die out of anguish. But Jacob's favorite wife, thank God, that was not enough because still... She wanted to have a child, and she wanted to conceive. And church being saved is, is not enough. Thank God, I don't want to get satisfied that I'm saved, and, and that satisfies me. Thank God, we must have souls because of our altars. Thank God, need to see souls being born in them because there's no substitute for souls. Thank God, that is our business. Thank God. And so I've come tonight just to kind of remind you of the purpose of the church. People dance here. But this is not a dance hall. Thank God. And matter of fact, I know that some of you don't feel like you've had church unless you get your dance. And that's all right. Thank God. But this is not a dance hall. Thank God. We come here and we have fellowship. But this is not a fellowship hall. Praise God. Even though the Bible says that we need to fellowship one with another. Thank God. People sing here. And we play music here. But this is not a place for uh, amateur talent or to have a talent show. Thank God. This is not a talent show that we're in. Praise God. That's not the purpose of the church. Thank God. We come together on family night and have recreation here. But this is not a recreation center. Thank God. People get healed here. But this is not a hospital. Thank God. Because that the, the church, thank God, is a recreation center. Thank God. This is where souls 
are saved. This is a soul-saving station. It's where people come to have their lives put together, ain't God? It's where that people come to be changed and to be made into new creatures. And I am so thankful because when God saves you, He changes you. It is amazing. Praise God. I hope Brother Johnny don't mind me saying this. If he does, he can tell me after church. Praise God. But um, he told, I think it was Sister Smith, he said, you know, he said, my brother up there, he said, I don't even know him. Thank God. That is not, I don't, he's changed so much. He is so different. He said, I don't even know how to react to him. Praise God, because he is so different. I believe that's the kind of way the Holy Ghost does it. It changes you. Thank God. And that's why that sometimes we think that, well, they are so this way or so that way, they could never be changed, saved, or they would never be able to, to live this life. But the truth of the matter is, is when God changes you, ain't God, anybody can live for God. If you will let the Holy Ghost change you, ain't God, you can live for God. And so I've come tonight to remind the church that the purpose of the church, thank God, why we exist, thank God, is because of souls. Thank God, in the Old Testament, it was a reproach to be barren. Thank God, in the New Testament, it's a reproach to be spiritually barren. To have empty pews are a reproach. To have empty altars is a reproach. Thank God, to have nobody getting baptized is a reproach. Thank God, God wants there to be revival. Our only hope for the church to stay alive is for souls to be saved. Thank God, for without Without new converts, thank God, we're destined to die. Thank God, without new converts, enthusiasm dies. Thank God, just every time a new person comes in that's enthused about living for God, it enthuses the whole church. Thank God, we all kind of get a bounce out of that. Praise God. Without new converts, faith dies. What tremendous faith that, uh, you know, new converts bring with them because of just the simplistic childlike faith that just says, you know, he said it, I believe it, I claim it. Thank God, without new converts, evangelism dies because some of the greatest uh, evangelism is done by new converts. I don't know how many times new converts tell me that, well, you know, uh, I don't really know a whole lot. Thank God, but, but all these people want to know about what happened to me. Thank God, you're the best thing that ever happened to the church because your witness just impresses people so much. Thank God. Jacob tried to make uh, Rachel not feel bad about her barren condition, but there was no substitute for a child, thank God. And there are voices today that try to make us feel good about uh, what we're doing, thank God, and all the things that we do around the church and how blessed that the church is and how many people are willing to do things around the church and, and the nice buildings and the good fellowship that we have at church. But uh, big crowds is no substitute, thank God, for souls. Good music is no substitute for souls. Thank God, great sermons are no substitute for souls. Money in the bank is no substitute for souls. Thank you, Lord. We need souls, and we need people to be transformed. And God, and I'm telling you, much of it starts in the womb of the church. And God, where that we uh, begin to agonize, and we begin to travail, and we begin to reach for God. It was God that uh, had shut up her womb, and it was only God that could open her womb up. And God, and the same is true with the church. Only God can open the church's womb. And God, and this is how that he said he would do it. And God, if I shut up heaven... And there is no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. And if I send pestilence upon my people. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Thank God. So it's no program. Thank God. It's no new idea. It's no new way to have church that's going to open up the womb of the church. But what's going to open up the womb of the church is just some old-fashioned praying, old-fashioned burden, old-fashioned loving the lost. Thank God. That's what it's going to take. Thank God. We have a clear word from the Lord. Thank God. On how to get the womb open. Praise God portion of Isaiah chapter 66 and verse number 8 says, who, hath such a, who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? For as soon as Zion travails, she brought forth her children. 
Thank God. There is a place in God where that we can so travail that it's going to bring forth children. For souls to be saved, somebody's going to have to get a burden and, and stand in the gap and make up the hedge. There's no sale days for souls. Souls' salvation cost precious blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. And it's going to cost us some blood, some sweat, and some tears to see souls say somewhere there's going to have to be something deep moving in our lives. Thank God. It costs to get a drug addict a free. It costs to get the bottle out of an alcoholic's hand. It costs to get tobacco out of a person's shirt pocket. Thank God. It costs some prayers. It costs some agonizing. It costs some reaching for that soul. Nothing we do can make us uh, happy than being a soul winner. Thank God. Dancing all you want. Thank God. Fellowship all you want. But there's no substitute for soul. Somewhere we've got to get down to the bottom line is, God, I was saved to be a soul winner. I wasn't saved to be a musician. I wasn't saved to just be a good person in the church. I wasn't saved just to be a tithe payer. Thank God. I was saved to win souls. Somewhere Every one of us can affect some soul that we can make a difference in. And nothing we do can make us any happier than souls being saved. Thank God. We're not trying to get people to, um, you know, transfer from other churches to our church. Thank God. What we're trying to do is get people to be transformed. Thank God. By the power of the Holy Ghost to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. For the old to pass away and for the new to become fresh in their lives. Church, we can't be satisfied until there are souls praying through in these altars, until people are finding God. Thank God. I don't care how many good programs we have, and I thank God for every program. I don't care how much work we get done around here or how nice everything looks. Thank God. What we've got to have is souls. Thank God. Because there are more Darlene's out there. Thank God. There are more Donays out there. There are more Donald and Peanuts out there. Thank God. There are more Brother Fred Bruners out there. There are more souls out there that all we have to do is get involved in people's lives. Thank God. Praise God. When we look around and see the people that bless this church so much and that are so busy doing for God, thank God, they were just a lost soul that God found. And here they are tonight being a blessing and ministering to the church. And so for everyone that's involved tonight, thank God, every one of them was just a lost soul floundering around in the cesspool of sin. And somewhere somebody made intercession. Somebody stood in the gap and reached for them. And they're saved tonight. Thank God, there's, this is no time to be congratulating ourselves on the successes and the victories that we have. Thank God, because we haven't scratched the surface on touching this city and reaching our lost. And so help us, God, to know that we're so close. Some of you are touching people's lives in such a special way. I'm so excited about several people that are teaching Bible studies and some that are fixing to start teaching Bible studies. And there is nothing that is so beautiful as you personally sitting down with somebody and teaching them the word of the Lord. Thank God. Look, souls being saved is more important than someone being healed of cancer. We think it's such a, a mighty thing for somebody to get healed. But I'm telling you, for God to um, open somebody's blinded eyes and suddenly they can say, I see the oneness of God. I see that it's not three, but it's one. I'm telling you, that's greater than blinded eyes being opened to get their spiritual eyes open. Thank God for what He can do. And so God called us to be fishers of men. Thank God. And He is not interested in how clean your nets are. He's not really interested in how pretty your boats are. But what He really is interested in is that God's wish is fish. Thank God. He wants us to smell like fish. He wants us to look like fish. He wants us to uh, sound like fish. Praise God. He just needs somebody, thank God, that's going to go fishing. Somebody that's going to move. And somewhere he wants this church to have something kind of fishy about it. Praise God. That's new convert. Everybody that, uh, some people that doesn't look just like uh, an old established Pentecostal. There need to be ladies here that have short hair. There needs to be some makeup in the church. There needs to be some people in here that's got pants on. There needs to be some people in here that don't have it just all together yet. Praise God. People need to walk in here and say, well, thank God. It looks like there's some new converts around here because I'm telling you, that's what God is pleased with. This is a fishing boat. It's not a cruise liner. Thank God, it's not some place you just get your seat and sit down and enjoy the ride, but it's a place for men to get on board and to put in their nets and to get busy for the Lord. 
Praise God. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Thank God we have become uh, no other commandment, but the commandment that Jesus gave us to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Thank God. The devil doesn't want the world to know. Thank God that God loves them. Thank God he loves this world unconditionally. Without any conditions, priests of range, God loved the world. Thank God. God loves has nothing to do with how good we are or how bad we are. Thank God. He loved us when we were in our mother's womb. He loved us before we were ever conceived. And there is no sin that he that you can commit that he cannot forgive and put under the blood and wash away. Thank God. God loves you so much. Thank God that the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We have the promise of everlasting life. Thank God. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank God. He didn't die for me when I was good. He didn't die for me when I got good. And, and you may be here tonight away from God. You may be here tonight and never experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you, it's the most wonderful thing that can happen in your life. And there is a transforming work that takes place when a person is filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's something that happens in them that nothing else can compare to. I can tell you how great it is. I can tell you how it changes lives. But the truth of the matter is, until you experience it for yourself, you really don't know the transforming power of God to take us from a nowhere, thank God, and to put us somewhere, to make us, to take a nobody and to make us somebody out of us, to take us out of darkness and put us into light, to take us out of the old and put us into the new, thank God, to create in us a new creature, thank God, that we don't even think the way we used to think, we don't act the way we used to act, we have been transformed by the power of God, so don't ever forget, there is a God that loves you, Thank God. And if you, thank God, will confess your sins, He has promised that He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. There is nothing that is too black and nothing that's too sinful and nothing that's too away from God that God cannot reach down and, and cleanse you and wash you and make you whole again. Praise God. And there is therefore now no condemnation. The devil wants to condemn you of your past, but Jesus wants to forgive you of your past. He wants to set you free from all the chains that have you bound. He wants to give you a liberty that nothing else can give you. He wants to give you a peace that passeth all understanding. Praise God. Because he's a faithful God. While we're standing tonight, thank God, it's, it's clean, clear for us, thank God, that have never, thank God, known how good God can just be to us. Thank God, there's so many that just don't understand just how good God wants to be to them, how much He really wants to help them. Thank God, to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness, to turn us away from all of our evil ways, to turn us into the, the ways of God. Praise God. And so tonight, God will forgive Thank God, you, if you will just come and ask Him, God will give you a new lease on life. God will renew the old and put something new in you and put a fresh desire in your heart to be saved and to know Him in His power because He is a faithful God. So He showed up today, thank God, because He knew you were going to show up and He knew that you were going to be here tonight. In some way, He wants to touch your life. Thank God. And so, church, while we're closing this service tonight, First thing I want us to do is just pray for God to convict every heart. Thank God. And whatever it is that drew you to the house of God, whatever made you want to come through those doors tonight, in some way you would just go ahead and surrender to that voice that is drawing, that voice that's calling you, and that voice that's saying, I'm the way, I'm the truth.